and um, that's coming through nicely. Good. I'll put it into. When Kieran was speaking, it was breaking up a little bit for me. I don't know whether that's my Wi-Fi here. Um, I'm in Prague for the EOSC symposium, or whether it's the the Wi-Fi there. But please do shout up if it, if anything's not coming through clearly. And you I'm currently sure I can coming work through with... nicely and clear, Simon. Okay. Good. Well, let's let's press on. So the title that, that, that was put on the program, and thank you, Kieran, for that introduction. I've got nothing more to say about who I am or what I do. Um, the, the title I was given was World Fair, the World Fair Project. So I'll talk about that. And that's part of a larger co-data initiative with the International Science Council on making data work for cross-domain grand challenges. But I'll also start the presentation with a little bit, bit about co-data our relationship to our parent organization, the International Science Council, and some of the work and some thinking about vocabularies, which I hope will be pertinent for this event. So for those of us, I know that some of you in the room are very familiar with CoData, but I'm sure that some of you are not. So CODATA is the Committee on Data of the International Science Council. We're called a committee, but we're more than a committee. We're an organization in our own right. We have a legal status and our own financial uh, basis and our own mission. But we were created by the predecessor of the International Science Council, then called the International Council for Scientific Unions, in 1966, so we've been around for over 50 years, we were created to address issues around data which were emerging in science at that time. I'm sure they'd been around before that, but that was when the International Council for Scientific Unions decided to address them. And that was partly in the aftermath of the International Geophysical Year, which caused or which led to a lot of data collection activities and raise the profile of data collection and issues relating to data in the minds of um, the leadership of the International Science Council. Now, CODATA, as I say, our mission is to connect data and people to advance science and improve our world. We exist to support the mission of the ISC also, which is to advance science as a global public good. And we do so by promoting open science and fair data. And there's more information on that side of that slide about what sort of organization we have. We have national memberships, membership from international scientific unions and from other organizations. We act through a set of working groups, task groups, and projects. In our strategy, we have four priority areas, one of which is this decadal program, which I'll speak about a little bit, making data work for cross-domain grand challenges. I'll come on to that in a moment. But we also have three other priority areas. We do work on data policies. So we have an international data policy committee with a very dynamic new chair um, who here in Prague, at the, G, at the EOSC symposium and a couple of weeks ago at the Fair Week, um, organized a workshop on data policy in times of crisis. And he's really hit the ground running. There's a lot of new work that we're doing in the areas of data policy. But for the past few years, we've produced or contributed to a significant report per year, largely through the work of the Data Policy Committee or through the Secretariat. So data policy and contributing to global views on open science, on fair data, as Kieran said in the introduction to some of the things I've done recently, um, is one of our contributions. We do work on data science through the Data Science Journal, through conferences, through our task groups and working group. The next significant conference that CODATA is contributing to is International Data Week in Salzburg in October 2023. That's a partnership with the Research Data Alliance and with the World Data System. And I'm sure you're already aware that the International Data Week after that will be in Brisbane in 2025, um, also in October, I think. I need to check the dates of that. 
And then the fourth priority area is training and education. We do various activities ar around data skills, in particular, again, in partnership with, with the Research Data Alliance, the CoData RDA um, data schools. Now I'm going to spend a couple of uh, slides on some of the other contributions to science and issues around data that CoData makes. Um, one of our longest standing task groups is this task group on fundamental constants. That's been in existence since 1969. And it's convened by CoData, but also very much in partnership with the BIPM, the International Bureau of Weights and Measures, the organization, the intergovernmental organization that looks after the meter convention and the SI system. Now that task group historically has reviewed the data coming out of metrology labs around the world and has recommended values for a range of fundamental physical constants. Um, now, importantly, since 2019, the core units of the SI, of the International System of Units, are derived mathematically from the recommended values for the core fundamental constants. So, for example, the kilogram, rather being ba based upon a titanium block, which was held in the subterranean vaults of the BIPM just outside Paris, underneath three bell jars to prevent even one, um, or to retard the, the effect of, uh, uh, of, of even one atom um, being um, removed from that, from that block. Rather being based upon that block of titanium, the, the kilogram is now derived mathematically from Planck's constant and so on. So that all the base units are derived from the, uh, the codata recommended values of fundamental constants. Now, related to that work um, is a more recent task group called the task called DRUM, the task group on digital representation of units of measure. And I think Stuart Chalk spoke to you yesterday, and I'm sure he will have mentioned uh, some of this work. The mission of DRUM is to encourage a degree of alignment or cooperation and coordination around the various systems for representing units, and thereby to increase the fairness and the interoperability of data which references those, those systems of units. And one of the things, among others, one of the things that the, the DRUM task group has aimed to do is to increase the involvement of international scientific unions with thinking about units, and in due course, I'm sure, not just about units, but the things that those units are measurements of or that those units um, relate to, the measurands or the quantities in the language of the, the, the metrologists and the or BIPM. So that'll be further work. But the important thing to retain from that is the engagement with international scientific unions and other representatives of particular research areas. That task group has produced a manifesto a call to action and a call to action article um, in uh, a nature comment article uh, comment article in nature um, entitled top stop squandering data make units of measurement machine readable which really sums up a lot of the issues that that task group hopes to address in collaboration with the working group of the BIPM the also developing a universal metrology data model and um, a, a colleague in particular from that task group has developed an API for fundamental constants and various uh, conference sessions and a unit summit and we hope a hackathon next year. Now, why 
am I talking about this issue around the fundamental constants and the use units of measure? Because I think those are two recent examples in terms of our interests and activity of, if you like, a return to a core mission for CoData and in relation to the International Science Council. International organizations like CoData and like the International Science Council, what sometimes we need to step back and ask, what, what is our role? What can our contribution genuinely be to coordination of data activities, of interoperability, and the adoption and endorsement of standards and terminologies? And I think the work on fundamental constants and the work of DRUM are two good examples of us trying to address that on a global scale in coordination with other important stakeholders and organizations. So a little bit of history. When we go back to the foundation of the predecessor of the International Science Council, the predecessor even of ICSU, it was called the Global Research Council. That was founded in 1919, alongside the oldest of the international scientific unions, the International Union of uh, Geophysics and Geodesy and the International um, Union of Pure and Applied Chemistries, uh, Chemistry and some others. And in that movement, just after the First World War, there was a, a recognition of the need for global scientific co uh, cooperation and a certain vision of the role that that should take. And prominent, very prominent among those early missions of the what became ICSU and of the early scientific unions was work on coordinating and establishing nomenclatures on agreed terminologies for scientific phenomenon. And in those early documents, it seems that they didn't quite have this view, which is very much hours of, of fair and the importance of terminologies and vocabularies as defining the, they had the view of them defining the concepts, but not, but not perhaps quite defining the, um, the, uh, the, the measure and or the quantity. But it was certainly moving in that direction. And the international, the early activities of the International Scientific Unions were very much focused on um, work on, as I say, on nomenclatures. Now, so that's one thing that I think that CoData and related organizations should continue to do. Now, one of our challenges now often we say is not that we're short of standards or metadata specifications or terminologies, but there's often a lack of awareness of which to use. And there's a proliferation almost of terminologies and ontologies. But then again, I would say that there is a role for international scientific unions, for organizations like CoData and the International Science Council, but also for learned societies and journal editorial boards to encourage the, not the creation of yet another new standard, but encourage some uh, coalescence towards the adoption of fewer standards and recommend even the adoption of certain standards and terminologies in particular domains. Um, a recent Nature um, correspondence piece um, from Marshall Maher and, and Leslie Wybon, who I'm sure is there, um, responded to an argument around the importance of metadata with a call for scientific unions and other representative organizations, other organizations that can claim to represent um, a particular domain or area of research to take more interest in um, issues around metadata and terminologies. I'm going to make a brief call for another area of action, which I think res um, relates to something that Kieran was just talking about as well. Now, some colleagues will have will have seen 
would have heard this call for activity and seen this slide um, before, but I think it bears repeating. Um, one of the things we depend upon a number of pieces of infrastructure in the data space, in the data ecosystem. Some of those are data repositories, for example, but one of the pieces of important technology and infrastructure upon which we rely are metadata specifications and terminologies. And some of those which underpin core work in particular domains are maintained on a, on a shoestring. Now that's not always entirely a bad thing, but I think this XKCD cartoon speaks to some of the risk and some of the concerns that we might have when certain essential parts of our information infrastructure are relatively undervalued. A few years ago, Codata with OECD, um, for OECD or for the, um, with the, uh, the Global Science um, Forum of OECD, produced this report on business models for sustainable research data uh, repositories. And for some time now, I've been thinking that it would be a good thing, resource and effort um, willing, to do a similar study on the information component of our data infrastructures, in particular metadata specifications and or terminologies. And just a brief survey, we can see a variety of, of governance, sustainability, business models and technical models for um, metadata specifications and uh, terminologies. And some of those are, uh, are listed there. I'm not going to go through those um, in detail. But I think a similar study to understand how are vocabularies and terminologies governed? How are the widely used ones maintained? How are they resourced? And are there any concerns that we might have about um, the way in which certain key terminologies are looked after? And perhaps also that study could make recommendations on how we can increase alignment and coalescence, what mechanisms currently work to encourage the coalescence towards particular terminologies rather than a free for all where, where everyone writes their own list of terms. Um, and we, we start to find uh, the task focusing more on cross works rather than adoption. So I'll leave you with that, that thought and talk briefly about some other work in the relation to terminologies that Codata is involved with. Um, for a few years, we've been holding workshops at, at Dagstuhl and the colleague whose voice I think I heard her, I'm sure is there, Simon Cox, and led a group um, as a result of one of those workshops, which produced this nice article um, on 10 simple rules for making a vocabulary fair. That work was picked up specifically by the International Union of, uh, for the Scientific Study of Population, which has established a working group, which is at an advanced state now making a set of recommendations for terminologies in uh, population research. Um, there's a pretty complete draft now, which is being reviewed by, by certain stakeholders to that. And that's it's great to see that moving forward. We've also had similar discussions um, with IUPAC, the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry, is about how to, to make those term, the terminologies that, um, that that organization looks after fair. And that's um, those discussions have led directly to activities in the World Fair project. We'd be very keen in either directly or indirectly encouraging similar work with other representative bodies, whether international scientific unions or otherwise, that are concerned with and that look after um, particular uh, vocabularies. And it should be said that IUSSP doesn't look after terminologies itself, but as an international scientific union representing that domain, it cares that those vocabularies exist. And they were able to convene input from OECD, from UN stats, and from other organizations that care about those vocabularies into that uh, working group. And I think that's an important um, precedent. GoData itself is involved in some terminology work. Um, we're now looking after what was known as the CASRI Research Data Management Glossary, now um, stewarded by 
co-data. Um, there was a major revision of that as a result of our taking it over. We've cleaned it up, uh, or a working group, I should say, that we convened has cleaned up that terminology a great deal. The public review closed earlier this year and um, we'll be publishing it as a fair vocabulary with the help of Research Vocabularies Australia um, before the end of the year. And we're trying to shepherd through a similar process for the ISC UNDRR um, hazard information profiles, which has been prepared over the last few weeks, few years, I should say. It's been uh, a number of years work. Um, by an expert group convened by ISC and UNDRR, and we hope that will be published in a similar way. Now, um, <clears throat> I'm going to change gears a little bit and introduce, move on from that discussing co-data activities around vocabularies to introducing um, the program, the Decadal Program Making Data Work and the uh, World Fair Project. So for a few years, CODATA has been interested in FAIR, of course, particularly in the, the I and the R of FAIR, the interoperability and reusability of FAIR, but also with the challenges for the implementation of those principles in particular domains, but also for cross-domain research areas. The premise for this is that the major pressing global and scientific human issues of the 21st centuries, things like climate change and climate change adaptation, the human side of climate change, if you like, um, or the human side of the response to climate change, um, the growth of cities and understanding the cities as a mechanism um, of disaster risk reduction of almost all of the sustainable development goals. Each of those areas of research requires an interdisciplinary approach and requires data from a number of different sources, whether that's modeled together in a complex system or whether indeed it's, it's looked at in series, but nevertheless needs to be considered alongside. So for a few years, we were, uh, or a few years ago, I should say, we were asked by the International Science Council to prepare um, a plan for a program which would be part of the International Science Council's action plan. And that became this, this decadal program, Making Data Work for Cross Domain Grand Challenges. Um, and thanks to funding from the European Commission, we now have at the heart of that um, a project called World Fair, which I'll go on to talk about. We kicked off this work with two exploratory workshops in 2017 to look at um, issues of cross domain interoperability. Um, that led to collaboration with the DDI initiative, uh, the DDI Alliance, and a series of Dargstall workshops and some funded work on DDI CDI, CDI standing for cross domain integration. And it also involved engagement with a number of case studies in epidemiology, in urban health, in disaster risk reduction. And that allowed us to identify an approach and a methodology which, which we think has, has some value. The funded work on DDI-CDI resulted in a report for the European Open Science Cloud. Um, I'll just leave that slide there for the, uh, for the reference in, in case you're interested in that. But some of the functions that DDI-CDI aims to address has, has really influenced our thinking about a cross-domain interoperability framework and the approach that we would take in the World Fair project. The World Fair project is a two-year project funded by the European Commission. Um, there's a lot of work going on in Europe, which you may be aware about uh, or aware of um, in relation to the European Open Science Cloud. This project contributes to that, but it was funded by a parallel piece of funding um, called the the European research area, and it was really designed to encourage engagement on a global scale. And so we were allowed for that project to have beneficiaries to institutions that are funded by the European Commission outside the European Union, and um, therefore partners in uh, two partners in Australia, um, uh, the, uh, the Australian Data Archive and OSCO, partners in Brazil, in Kenya, in New Zealand, two partners in the US as well. Um, interestingly, because of Brexit, despite being able to fund 
partners from um, from other countries outside the European Union. We weren't allowed to give money to the to the to the British, and it's probably their own damn fault. So um, that project has a number of case studies and a central methodology. And one of the things that it aims to do is to respond directly to recommendation four from turning fair into, fair into reality. That recommendation argues that we need to encourage and facilitate um, the process whereby research communities in particular domains or in cross-domain research areas can develop interoperability or fair frameworks for their research area. And that covers things like the, um, the practices for data sharing, what data formats are used, me what metadata standards are adopted, et cetera, et cetera. And it, additionally, the recommendation says that to support interdisciplinary or cross-domain research, those frameworks should be articulated in common ways and adopt global standards. And that's something that we really seek to address, as I say, through the, um, the World Fair project. Similar recommendations for interoperability frameworks are also made in the UNESCO recommendation and the ISC action plan. And a point for discussion that I'd like to know more about is, is that recommendation, does that speak to priorities also in Australia and for the ARDC? So as I said, the World Fair Project is based around this set of 11 specific and concrete case studies. And I think this is a real virtue of the project and the way that we've tried to design it in that we're very closely and tightly engaged with those case studies. And they range through a through a number of research areas that, and they're grouped into clusters as well to encourage cross-fertilization. So there's three relating in various ways to chemistry, um, one on, uh, on IUPAC assets, one on nanomaterials, one on geochemistry led by OSCOPE. Um, one on, then a, there's a social science cluster, one on social surveys data, which is a collaboration between um, the Australian Data Archive, which hosts the Australian um, social survey, and uh, the Norwegian Data Archive, which hosts the European social survey. Related to that on population health, um, looking at a project which combines population health data with clinical outcome data relating first to HIV and then to COVID. Interesting project also on urban health, looking at the data harmonization activities of a, a large welcome uh, funded trust, uh, welcome trust funded project called Salobal, um, looking at uh, urban health data in Latin America. Two projects relating to biodiversity, one led by GBIF, which is obviously a, a leading institute in biodiversity data, the other looking at pollinator data with a large, um, or a, at least I should say a diverse set of partners, including Embrapa from Brazil and Calro from Kenya, um, as well as HiveTracks, which is an American SME looking at pollinator data and um, the, the, the Mesa Botanical Garden in, in Belgium to looking at, uh, at environmental data of various sorts. So the ocean science, again, led by the architects of ODIS, the Ocean Data and Informa Information System, and um, disaster risk reduction led by Tonkin and Taylor in New Zealand. And then finally, last but, but not least, uh, a work package and case study on cultural heritage, really largely focusing on image data um, led by the Digital Repository of Ireland. So there you can see a very diverse set of case studies, um, but case studies often with significant leaders, um, a number of organizations that gen can genuinely claim to be authoritative in relation to the data um, in, in those particular case studies, or that are involved in significant global collaborations. So with a high degree of possibility or probability, therefore, that the findings of those case studies will be adopted. 
And then at the center of this petal diagram, which you can see is the coordinating work package, um, which is addressing three things. We're looking at fair implementation profiles across domain interoperability framework and recommendations for more domain sensitive fair assessment. And I'll run through those um, relatively quickly, I think in the interest of time. So fair implementation profiles is a methodology which is developed by the GoFair um, initiative. And it's really simply a set of questions about how do you make the metadata and data that you're concerned with fair in relation to each of the fair principles. So in its conception, it's a relatively simple thing, but I think it's fair to say that the case studies have found it a particularly useful process to go through um, of almost not quite self-assessment, but uh, a process of, of self-query, if you like. What is our current practice in relation to FAIR? And therefore, where might that practice be in, improved? The questions ask you in their jargon to identify for each of the questions or, or FAIR principles, a FAIR enabling resource that you use to make, to respond to that particular FAIR principle. Now that could be an identifier, it could be a service, it could be a metadata specification, it could be an ontology, it could be a terminology. And that allows you to identify a set of FAIR enabling resources which um, potentially can be reused by other communities. And the methodology consists both of these set of questions and our case studies fill them out in a, in a spreadsheet. And then it also consists of this Fit Wizard, which is an online tool, which creates a, um, uh, a nano, what, the, what they call a nano publication, which is really the expression of the FAIR enabling resource in RDF. And the benefit of that, although it's a bit clunky to do, the benefit of that is that that creates the FER, the FAIR enabling resource, as, a, as I said, as a nano publication in, in RDF, and allows other communities to reference it. And in time, we hope that that might give us, when visualizing that graph of FERs that are used by different communities, might give us some insight into um, what FERs are, sh are showing themselves to be particularly well adopted um, and patterns of usage across and among particular domains. I think in all, it also creates this typology of, of FERs and a functional breakdown of the FAIR principles, which is useful um, for our insight into the next step, which is the, the cross-domain interoperability framework. The, FE, the FIPS, this FAIR implementation profiles is being performed early in the project really as, a, as an initial exploration into practice, and it will be conducted later in the project. And at that stage, we're going to ask the case studies really to look forward beyond the, the life of the project and say, okay, what have you learned through the process of the project? And what would you see as a, as a not necessarily an ideal end, end state, but an improvement on your current pro, uh, practice beyond the life, uh, the life cycle of the project? We will also, we hope, be able to feed the findings of those FAIR implementation profiles into recommendations for more domain-sensitive FAIR assessment. There are, particularly in Europe, I think all elsewhere, the FAIR principles has given rise to a set of online tools which are intended to assess the fairness of uh, data coming out of, of particular domains or of, or of, um, or of uh, in fair infrastructures, data infrastructures. Now, I think those tools are worthy and they're potentially useful, but I think they remain relatively one size fits all. And a little bit, a few years ago, there was some work by Science Europe to make recommendations for how data management plans could better address the needs of particular domains and include within them more targeted questions and recommendations for good practice in particular research areas. And I think we can do something similar 
for fare assessment. And that would be empirically guided by the findings from the fare implementation profiles and from what we find from these 11 case studies. So that's that's something which we think will be useful coming out of the, the project. And then finally, and almost what, what I personally think see as the most important contribution to um, the project outputs from Work Package 2 will be a set of recommendations for a cross-domain interoperability framework. Now, this is some work that we've been thinking about for some time and lies at the heart of this, of the World Fair project and of the program for um, making data work for cross-domain research areas. And that's the idea that there's a, a, we can identify a functional list of issues that need to be addressed for interoperability as such, and in particular for interoperability across domains, for the sort of case studies and examples, or at least some of the case studies and examples that we've listed here in Worldfare. All domains need to have definitions of the object of study, whether they, they call that the quantities or measurements or properties or whatever. They need to have those definitions. What is it that's being measured or observed? They need to have definitions of the units which are being used to quantify or even in some instances to qualify those, those, those observations. They need to have ways of expressing the terminologies, the vocabularies and ontologies that are involved in this. Taking things that we've learned from the collaboration with DDI, with the Data Documentation Initiative and relating to cross-domain integration, we all, we also think it's very useful to have, or almost as essential to have, the data description. What in the D D in DDI CDI is called the variable cascade, the mechanism that links those concepts to the variables to the to the to the data in in the way that the data is is described and represented. Also in DDI CDI, there is a um, a modeling of various types of data structure, and the idea there being that being to make machine manipulation or um, transformation of data sets um, easier to automate. We also need to carry um, in the metadata information about provenance and the processing the data has undergone, about the data types, what can be done technically to these types of data, Licenses, what can be done legally, if you like, to these types of data, both by humans and by their machines, and um, the program, the protection programmatic access. And that's just an ad hoc list. We've got a, a, a more specific list in some of the preliminary documentation there. But I hope you see what we're edging towards there is a typology a functional typology of the issues that need to be addressed in interoperability as such and in cross-domain interoperability. And in relation to each of those functional areas, it's possible to, to identify candidate specifications or standards which were, are used either across most domains or in a number of domains, and which we can then point to as good practice for addressing the functional requirements of that particular part of, of the cross-domain interoperability framework. We've been thinking about this for a while since some of this earlier work and since the collaboration with um, DDI-CDI. Um, so there's a number of presentations and sessions that we've organized to explore these ideas and a discussion paper which was um, which was presented at the at the Dargstall workshop earlier earlier this year. We're now setting up a working group and advisory group to take that work, work forward in the context of the World Fair project. And at the very least, by the end of the project, we'll have a set of recommendations about what that cross-domain interoperability framework could look like, if not some more detailed specifications for certain parts of it. If we thought of it. Um, as I said, we've been exploring that at, at the Dugstall workshop, which also looked at Again, three concrete case studies um, related to the World, World Fair uh, work, and there's a report on that workshop there. So 
Um, I think this is the slide to close the, the, the presentation. So it's a, it's a two year kickstart for a set of de, the World Fair project as part of the, cross, uh, the, uh, the program Making Data Work for Cross Domain Grand Challenges. It's a two year kickstart for a set of domain and cross domain research areas. We think there's a useful methodology there looking at um, that recommendation from turning fair into reality for how you promote uh, domain or cross-domain interoperability frameworks. Applying the FIPS methodology usefully, we hope, to certain case studies and bringing out of that domain-sensitive fair assessment. And we hope recommendations and specifications for cross-domain interoperability framework. So we think that methodology is useful. Things are going well so far. I think the methodology and approach is being, is being validated. And therefore, we want to explore a number of opportunities to build on this work, to expand the number of case studies and how to take forward some of that methodology, how to refine that further, how to improve the FIPS process, for example, how to get more input into the cross-domain interoperability framework. And so we'd be very keen to explore whether a world fair type approach could be pursued um, in, Aust in Australia or with, with more Australian partners, with ARDC and other partners, partners in the domain commons, which are being established by, by ARDC. So very keen to answer questions on that project, on the program and our interest in vocabularies. And I hope that's been of interest um, to the participants in the symposium.